Sunday. You are going to war. He fought in the war. You're just a child, a boy. Sir, I'm a sailor. He was decorated a hero. He saved some lives, say. Then he was unjustly imprisoned. I want you off this ship. I'm not a deserter. And he was only 12 years old. Do you realize that you are probably the youngest American to serve in combat in this century? Through courage and determination, a boy becomes a man. Ricky Schroeder, too young the hero. Sunday. This is CBS. Up next on the 10 p.m. report, Northwest Airlines makes what some call a risky move, a sure sign of the times. The protesters were back as promised, but something was missing. A look at how doctors-to-be get their start. In Dimension are the television cameras prompting protester violence, and we find out what these people are doing to keep these legal. I'm Pat Miles. And I'm Don Shelby. The 10 p.m. report is coming up next. First, my dog ran away. So to cheer myself up, I bought an expensive TV, and it came with a remote. Then my girlfriend left me, so I bought a VCR, and it came with a remote. Then I was transferred to the Yukon Territory, and it came with a remote. Then I was audited by the IRS, and they came with remotes. So to simplify my life, I bought a Memorex CP8 Universal Remote, which could do everything eight different remotes could do. Then I was happy. In fact, the happiest cold and lonely guy stuck in the Yukon without a dog. I never miss an opportunity to go back where it all began for me, Manitoba. And once you see it for yourself, you'll know why. It's a world where people remember their roots and visitors are treated like family. It's a place where you can ride on a riverboat one day and paddle a canoe the next. It's everything I love to do, and that's why I keep going back. You have to see it all for yourself. Call this number now for your Manitoba travel pack. And tell them Bud sent you. Manitoba, your world next door. Of all the cars that come out each year, only one can be the Motor Trend Car of the Year. For 1988, that one is this one. The hot new Pontiac Grand Prix. Get on your Pontiac and ride! Pontiac ride! The new Grand Prix, Motor Trend's Car of the Year. You've got to drive it. Get on your Pontiac! Rebuild excitement! Reminder to America, it's not just men who farm our land, but also more than a million farm women who work as their partners to make America's food system one of the most productive on earth. That's something we shouldn't take for granted. This message brought to you on behalf of the American farmer by the makers of Dual Herbicide. April 23rd, exactly one month from tonight, D-Day for thousands of airline passengers. After that date, flying Northwest Airlines will mean a big change for smokers and non-smokers alike. WCCO Television presents Pat Miles, Don Shelby, Mike Fairborn, and Mark Rosen. This is the 10 p.m. report. Good evening, everyone. Minnesota-based Northwest Airlines, the fifth largest airline in the country, has announced it will become the first major U.S. airline to ban smoking on most of its planes. Northwest Airlines smoking ban goes well beyond what the government will require of all airlines starting next month. Northwest plans to ban smoking on all domestic flights except those to and from Hawaii. Federal regulations will ban smoking only on flights lasting two hours or less. The new Northwest policy is a sign of the times, and it appears to be aimed at attracting new passengers. But some analysts predict it could backfire and send flyers who smoke to other airlines. Mike Walsher reports. Northwest's announcement of the smoking ban won immediate support from the Surgeon General's office and the Heart and Lung Associations. And Northwest is announcing the ban to passengers as it boards some flights. That upset one smoker tonight who vows never to fly Northwest again. We had two or three or four or half a dozen people clap and it's like we're people, we're normal, you know. And if we want to get carried away, let's stop serving drinks. Other smokers say the ban won't be all that bad. You know, like a lot of my friends and stuff, it bother them because they smoke all the time, but it won't bother me. 
Some travel agents we talked with support the ban. Far the majority of our clients are asking for no smoking seats, and uh, they are also the ones that get most upset if they don't get a no smoking seat. Whereas the smokers are more likely to accept that they're going to have to travel painfully for an hour or two. But the Tobacco Institute and some airline industry analysts believe Northwest will lose passengers. But Northwest says its study of passengers shows that 9 out of 10 want to be in non-smoking, and that includes 30% of the people who actually smoke. Uh, we anticipate on the other side of the equation, however, that we'll have more uh, non-smokers come to the airline and be motivated to try Northwest than we'll have militant smokers walk away from the airline. One doctor says passengers who fear a painful withdrawal from cigarettes should fly with nicotine gum. Any smoker who uh, feels that this is going to be difficult for them uh, should just ask their doctor for a prescription uh, for nicotine gum and just have that available for those situations and these symptoms will be relieved. I'm Mike Walcher, WCCO Television News, the Twin Cities. Industry observers say it is unlikely other major airlines will match Northwest new policy. The University of Minnesota will decide tomorrow how to spend some of its gigantic cash reserve of $221 million. Word of the cash reserve angered many state lawmakers, forcing university officials to withdraw their request for any state money for this session of the legislature. David Levidoff, chairman of the Board of Regents, said that group will decide tomorrow how to spend down the reserve to about $40 million. The purpose of this is to help the faculty and to help the students at the University of Minnesota by coming up with as much money as we can ourselves and by helping to restore trust in this legislative body. University officials say even without state funds this year, though, the commitment to focus program will continue. Also at the state capitol today, another setback for horse industry people who want the state to take smaller bites out of the purses at Canterbury Downs. The author of a bill to give relief to that industry withdrew it before it was heard by a House subcommittee today. Apparently, there weren't enough votes to move it ahead because all of the state's tax relief is already spoken for. However, the bill's author says he'll bring it up to the full tax committee this Friday, and he says he may make the measure what's called revenue neutral, meaning that it won't cost the state any tax funds. The sounds of angry cab drivers in downtown Minneapolis today as they protested outside City Hall. They're upset about a plan to raise the fees they pay for taxi licenses. A City Council committee debated the proposal today. The city is also considering a request by the cab drivers to raise the fares they charge passengers. 250 demonstrators gathered in downtown Minneapolis this afternoon to further protest U.S. troops in Central America. USA, CIA, out of Nicaragua. They gathered outside Senator Dave Durenberger's office and protest leaders eventually brought their message upstairs to the office. We call upon Senator Durenberger to act in good conscience and with conviction to stop this war. Police were on hand, but the protest sponsored by Women Against Military Madness never got out of hand. They marched down the Nicollet Mall and wrapped it up with a rally in PV Plaza. Tomorrow's protest may not be so orderly, though. It is being organized by more radical elements of the anti-war movement. Federal charges may be filed against a protester who last week used a flag to stab a mannequin from the Army Reserve Office. It happened during Friday's anti-war protest in the uptown Minneapolis area. Police identified the man as a Naval Reserve officer. Charges may also be filed against another protester who allegedly burned a U.S. flag during last Thursday's protest. The U.S. troops sent to Honduras last week will apparently begin coming home Monday. The Pentagon says the scheduled pullout of 3,200 troops is consistent with what officials have been saying all along about those troops. The peace talks between the Sandinista government and Contra rebels were expected to end today, but there is word tonight that the talks may extend as both sides express optimism about an agreement to end the fighting. President Reagan with Soviet Foreign Minister Edward Shevardnadze at his side announced today there will be another superpower summit. Mr. Reagan says it will be held in Moscow for four days beginning May 29th. With the Statue of Liberty as a backdrop, New Jersey Senator and former pro basketball great Bill Bradley announced his endorsement of Democratic presidential hopeful Michael Dukakis. 
Bradley, who has been rumored as a possible candidate himself, is expected to help Dukakis in states like New Jersey, New York, and Pennsylvania. Former Minneapolis developer Harry Worth, who tried to renovate the old Milwaukee Road Depot, tonight stands indicted by a federal grand jury. The indictment accuses Worth of illegally transferring more than $600,000 from his bankrupt company to an outside party and then allegedly receiving that money back illegally. If convicted, Worth faces 10 years in prison and fines of at least $10,000. Worth could not be reached tonight for comment. Lyle Tollefson, the founder of a St. Paul home for alcoholics, was sentenced today to eight months in the workhouse after he was found guilty of stealing money from the facility. Tollefson was also ordered to repay the $3,500. The Minnesota unemployment rate went down last month, the largest one-month drop in state history. The rate went from 6.1 percent in January to 5.5 percent in February. And that compares to a nationwide unemployment rate last month of 6.2 percent. Some old friends back in the Twin Cities tonight putting on a show for young and old alike. It's Walt Disney's Magic Kingdom on Ice, starring Pinocchio himself making the rounds on the Met Center's ice rink. The Disney characters will perform 21 times between now and Easter Sunday. Last year, this crowd grew to 140,000. are using an IBM learning program called Writing to Read. Through computers and other tools, it's helping children across the country learn to read as much as two grade levels above the national average. I see a tiger. A tiger sees me. Tigers love the zoo. The end. To learn more, write IBM, Box 446, Montvale, New Jersey. Twin city love, twin sister love, like one will always be. But now and then another friend will set my spirit free. Why, oh. For your free vacation planning package, you'll find hundreds of places to stay and things to do. Find yourself in Wyoming. Get ready for summer now with a trip to the sports show. If you're in the market for fishing tackle, a boat, canoe or cruiser, or an RV and camping gear, take your family to the sports show this year at the Metrodome. Plan a vacation at one of the hundreds of travel booths. See the outdoor features game fish in a live fish tank, and the finest expert clinics in our history. Take your spring break at the Northwest Sports Show. Come on aboard, March 18th through the 27th at the Dome. Okay, let's move fast on staffing that finance project. Let's call account temps right now. I've got your analysis, and I agree. We're ready now. Call account temps first thing in the morning. They've got the accounting specialists we need. Last year alone, we placed over 35,000 account temps employees on temporary assignments. Our people step right in and get the job done. When you need temporary help in accounting or bookkeeping, call the best. Call account temps. Tonight in Dimension, behind closed doors at the state capitol, how lobbyists try to influence the way your lawmakers vote. First tonight, has it ever occurred to you, it has to a lot of people, that those Central American protests might be calmer if news photographers weren't around taking all those pictures? Well, the recent protests in Minneapolis have prompted questions just like that one, and there are more questions as well. Are the newspapers and television stations being manipulated into covering the protesters only because of the rock throwing? And also, what has become the real story? Flag burning and window smashing in Minneapolis or the issue of whether U.S. troops belong in Honduras? We plan to address those questions tonight, remembering why it is important that we do. The protests led to damaged property, potential injuries, thousands of dollars in police overtime, and a shift away from other work they could have done. Would all this have gone on without the news coverage, especially on television? Here's Trish Van Pilsen. When we last talked with you at 6 o'clock on Eyewitness News, it looked like that protest over in Uptown was over and done with. Tonight's news For four days, coverage of the protests led the news. It ran ahead of stories about the real issue, Central America, and got twice as much airtime. Were the protesters using the media? 
Each protest was scheduled to take place just before the evening newscast. Undoubtedly, no coincidence. We'll be ready to do a live shot at 5 and at 6 and a package at 10. Producers and editors at WCCO and the other stations decided to cover the demonstrations live each day, but not without reservations. The concern I have is that the balance between news coverage and being used for publicity by any group. Protests are geared toward the media just as political activity is geared toward the media, public statements by uh, political leaders. Just the difference is that uh, some uh, protests uh, are seen as popularly uh, legitimate and some aren't. Today, as though on cue, the straggling band of protesters organized, donned banners, and began chanting just as the TV cameras arrived. Once the media decide to cover these events, the presence of reporters and photographers may in fact change their very nature. Violence erupted around photographers at earlier protests. Was it because the cameras were there? I think people come out because they have a real genuine concern about an issue. But I also think that they realize the power of the medium, uh, of the media. And I think they also know how to sometimes manipulate the media, especially television a lot, because they know we go for the pictures, we go for some action. It's possible that the media presence may lead to a uh, more... Uh, activity, more intensity, uh, what might be considered violence. But today there were more cameras than ever and no violence. It appeared the faction of protesters prone to that weren't here. Tonight, This is a very important story. But what was the story? There is no question the skirmishes made the protests big news. Today, when it became obvious this protest would be peaceful, coverage at every station was scaled back drastically. It's irresponsible if the reason that media coverage has, um, if the, if the, if the the property damage is all that's increasing the, uh, the media coverage at this time. And so the media, not wanting to be used, but not wanting to miss a story, are caught. Protesters have a choice, demonstrate peacefully, don't get headlines, resort to this and risk tarnishing their image. They're caught too. With Pat Weiland, Trish Van Pilsen, WCCO Television News, Minneapolis. And by the way, all the cameras at protests do not belong to the media. Minneapolis police have had up to 10 photographers at the protest taking pictures which could be used as potential evidence. This next story in Dimension goes behind the scenes at the state capitol, looking at one of the most influential special interest groups, the gun lobby. There is a gun bill in dispute at the capitol. It's called the Right to Bear Arms Amendment to the Constitution. Supporters say it would forbid once and for all any possibility that the state might ban handguns. The bill stalled in the Senate last week, but the gun lobby hopes to keep it alive. Lobbying. What does it really involve? What does it entail to try to influence lawmakers? Pat Kessler went along today to find that out. This is the gun lobby. It has political muscle far beyond its numbers at the State House. It fights for and against changes in gun laws. We have legislation coming to the floor which attacks gun owners again in the state. Norm Jensvold's day begins with a briefing for the National Rifle Association. What the media is going to seize upon is in here, it talks about the anti-gun people, but it also talks about the anti-gun media. 65,000 letters have just landed in the mailboxes of NRA members in Minnesota. By tomorrow, telephones at the Capitol will be jammed from supporters of a right to bear arms amendment. Calls are coming into the legislature. Uh, a lot of these people are saying, okay, what is it that your members and you want us to do? The gun bill may arouse more passion than most, but it is in the end like hundreds of other bills around here. Its success depends in large part on the rather tedious job of lobbying. We can make that. Yeah. We need that thing watched very closely. We're simply asking for actors. Not everyone appreciates their high-profile, high-pressure lobbying techniques. One state senator, although a longtime supporter of permissive gun laws, says he can't trust them. They will irritate people who, under normal conditions, would be very supportive. In their own eyes, however, they are serving a cause, a grassroots movement that approaches a mission. They believe they are misunderstood. They are frequently underestimated. Their perception is, is that the typical NRA member has a redneck, hairy knuckles that drag the ground and a beer can in the back pocket. I look like somebody's mother, obviously don't have room in the back pocket for a beer can. And I can talk about the issues, but I can also talk about the positive aspects of shooting sports. By week's end, the heat will be on and lawmakers will feel it. That's the job of the gun lobby, any lobby. 
But it cannot judge success unless it wins, and victory this year is more elusive than ever before. Pat Kessler, WCCO Television News. The gun lobby spent about $14,000 at the Capitol last year, a non-election year, by the way. Spending reports for this legislative session are due out next month. Meanwhile, the state is embroiled in a lawsuit to force the NRA to make public its contributors list. When broadleaf weeds block your way to higher corn yields, overpower broadleaf. With Banville herbicide, Banville provides all the residual control you need to clear the way for higher corn yields. Overpower broadleaves with Banville herbicide. see the clear difference between this lens and this lens, you should see the difference from in here. The Pentax AR code, now at Benson Optical. This is a breakthrough. Come and see Good Value Homes. What is a good value? Good Value Homes offers mortgage financing through David C. Bell Investment Company, Minnesota's oldest mortgage banker, working with Good Value Homes to provide affordable financing. Fairs Garden Center provides landscaping services to Good Value Homes, giving your new home a beautiful and inviting lawn. Fairs Garden Center for all your landscaping needs. Now that's a good value. Come and see Good Value Homes. You'll see why our name says it all. One cop commits a mistake. Hey, if you really want to do it, do it. Hey! One cop is on the make. She took me down by the river, and I refused her. What the hell do you think you're pulling? Answer me! One cop's an honest guy. I gotta tell you what I know about DiLiberto. Meaning what? Donnie, you whacked him. One cop's a samurai. I'm ready for duty, Lieutenant. Hill Street Blues. Oh, my God. Twin Cities come back to the hill tonight on Channel 4. Well, Mark Strell is uh, sitting in here for a while while Mike takes a vacation. We've had some good weather to report since you've been with us. Unfortunately, that's going to come to an end. I no. Think. Mark. Actually, we can't say it's bad weather. But we're going to get a little bit of rainfall, a little bit of precipitation. Well, we kind of need it. Though. We do. It. Uh, we need something to kind of wash the salt off the highways and byways and get rid of all that sand that has been scratching away at your fine auto finish over the last couple of days. Partly cloudy skies right now in the Twin Cities. We have 37 degrees. Our relative humidity, 82 percent. Winds out of the southeast at eight miles per hour. Barometric pressure falling from 29.94 inches of mercury. High today, 51 degrees, not all that bad, about nine above average. Morning low, still quite, a, quite warm, quite balmy, pretty mild, 34. No precipitation to report, that could change over the next couple of hours. Sunsets tomorrow at 6.30. First thing we want to show you, live National Weather Service radar from the good folks out at the Weather, uh, weather Service at the airport shows, look at this, some rain showers showing up. From Alexandria down to St. Cloud, uh, to the west end of the metro, just now, nicking at Wright County and back into Redwood Falls, there's a pretty decent shot that uh, much of the metro could get, as we mentioned, nicked by the shower activity, but it looks like it'll be mainly passing stuff and the rest of the night should be fairly clear. Elsewhere around the country, kind of a stormy night. In fact, all the uh, green you see here is rainfall. The yellow and the red, some thunderstorm activity from the Texas Gulf Coast all the way up to uh, Jamestown, New York. Some more snow showers out to the west where Reno, Nevada had 89 mile per hour wind gusts earlier today in windy conditions across the entire uh, western portion of uh, the hemisphere here actually. 40 degrees last hour at Alex. Look at this, still quite warm, 58 at Mitchell, South Dakota, 37 degrees at Rochester. The forecast map for tomorrow shapes up this way. As you can see, it's going to be cloudy just about anywhere you travel tomorrow. Rain showers from northern Minnesota all the way back down to Northern Missouri, it looks like uh, they'll probably be the scattered variety, but there's a pretty good chance of some rain tomorrow. And get this, even maybe a thunderstorm. First one so far this year. 50 degrees, the high temperature here in the Twin Cities, even 51 degrees up to the north at uh, International Falls. Well, here's our forecast for the Twin Cities tonight. Increasing clouds, 
It's still partly cloudy, remember, this hour out of the airport. We could get nicked by a passing shower or two, though. Look for a low temperature only about 35 degrees tonight. Winds way out of the southeast at about 10 miles per hour. Cloudy, breezy, a pretty good chance of showers tomorrow, maybe even a thunderstorm. High temperature of 48 degrees. Tomorrow night, basically the same story. Cloudy, mild, maybe some leftover showers. Low temperature of 40. And Friday, cloudy skies, more rain likely. High temperature of 45. The extended forecast shapes up at least on Saturday, partly sunny skies to sunny skies, 40s for highs, 30s for lows, and uh, we're back into a showery pattern on Sunday and Monday. Temperatures, can you believe that? 89 mile per hour wind gusts, Reno, Nevada. Wow. It's enough to put the chickens in the next county. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> colorful, colorful phrasing there. Thank you very much. Looking at some of the rest of the day's news, hunger hits the nation of Panama as a general strike continues against military strongman Manuel Noriega. The country is virtually shut down for a third night and poor people in many areas have just run out of food. Supplies of U.S. dollars to Panama have been cut off as well. Just pieces of debris are all searchers found today after an F-16 fighter crashed into the Gulf of Mexico last night. The unidentified pilot was on a solo training mission when he crashed off the coast of Fort Myer. A coalition of local veterans groups criticized local peace groups today for desecrating the U.S. flag in recent protests against the deployment of U.S. troops in Honduras. You saw some of those pictures. The veterans reminded protesters that destroying the U.S. flag is punishable by up to a year in prison. Coming up in sports, the Twins visit Kansas City's Boardwalk in Florida, and we will hear from Minnesotan Jim Eisenreich, who now plays for the Royals. We asked growers using atrazine on quackgrass why they didn't switch to Roundup herbicide for better control. It costs too much. Well, I'll bet it's $18, $19 an acre. Not anymore. The price of Roundup has been cut three times in three years. Now it's $15 an acre. What do you say to true quackgrass control for $15 an acre? I say Roundup's worth another look. Sure. Now the best quackgrass control costs less. See your dealer about Roundup. You may have seen this new Scandia Premium Yogurt in your grocery store. But don't be fooled by the name. Oh, sure. It's white, like all good Scandinavian foods. Like creamed herring and lutefisk. But Scandia has all this colorful fruit on the bottom. Too much fruit. And less sugar. Less white sugar. Try new Scandia Premium Yogurt with more real fruit and less sugar for a clean, refreshing taste. And another thing, it tastes too good to be Scandinavian. We can fix that. Let's stop at Burger King. They got a breakfast special for under a buck. How can it be special if it's under a buck? Just 99 cents for French toast sticks, a bagel sandwich, or a sandwich. Done like I do it. Like you do it. Yeah, French toast sticks, a bagel sandwich, or a sandwich. Just 99 cents. Good thing you're not doing it, because if you were doing it, you wouldn't do it for under a buck, and we wouldn't be here letting them do it. You know what I mean? Now, I got a pretty good idea. We do it like you do it when we do it like we do it at Burger King. Dayton's anniversary sale is on now. It's one of the only sales you'll find while the season is still new. With savings on all the season's freshest arrivals, you'll find spring in every department. But hurry, because you may not see another sale like this until the season's over. Dayton's anniversary sale. North Star's picked the most interesting times, the most interesting <laughs> places to do well. On the road, they yes. haven't, well, haven't done well anywhere this year, let's face it. But they lead the Blackhawks with three minutes to go, 5-4 in the third period. A win will put the Stars even with Toronto for that last playoff spot in the Norris Division. A typical North Star Blackhawk game in Chicago tonight. Plenty of penalties, fights, cheap shots, and in between, some great hockey. The North Stars came storming out of the gate tonight, building a 3-0 lead in the first period. Brian Bellow has opened the scoring with this bullet, his 39th goal of the season. Dino Cicerelli also picked up number 39 tonight. Second period now, and the Hawks come back. Dennis Savard converts a perfect pass for the 300th goal of his career. 43rd of the season, the Hawks have the game tied at three. The momentum had shifted, but the star's Mo Mantha turned things around with his second goal of the evening, walking right in on Chicago's Darren Pang before pulling the trigger for 3 Minnesota. Wally Schreiber added a shorthanded goal in the third. Dirk Graham then collected his second of the night for the Hawks. And the dust has not settled yet. The Stars still hold a 5-4 lead with three minutes to play in that game. Other games tonight, Montreal wins again 4-1 over Quebec. Pittsburgh pounded Washington, and the Islanders' L.A., they're just underway. No score there. 
Well, spring training is a time for reshuffling lineups and working mistakes out of one system. Lately, the Twins have been doing plenty of both. This afternoon, they fell to Kansas City 6-2. Danny Tartable's two-run homer off Joe Necro, the key to the win. Mark Rosen has more in the game and the Royals' new home in Florida. The Kansas City Royals plan on catching the Twins this year with an aggressive style under manager John Wathen. One of the players they are counting on is former twin Jim Eisenreich, who should get a lot of at-bats as the Royals' left-handed designated hitter. They were dead last a year ago in the American League and runs scored. Danny Tartable, who hit a two-run homer today, has the talent to improve that stat with a little help from his friends, George Brett and Bo Jackson. The Twins left six of their nine regulars back in Orlando. One starter who did make the trip, Kent Herbert, who took a mid-season style swing that resulted in his second spring home run. But overall, it was a March game that will be easily forgotten. Now, the great thing about this facility is if your team is losing and you've had enough baseball for the day, all you have to do is walk next door in this multi-million dollar complex. This state-of-the-art theme park was enough to pull the Royals out of Fort Myers, damaging that area's economy. It's an example of how intense the bidding is to entice Major League teams to house their spring training camps. Now Fort Myers is making a strong pitch to yank the Twins out of Orlando. Besides the usual spill and chill rides, Boardwalk and Baseball offers you a chance to swing like your favorite Major Leaguer. It may not help the Royals win the pennant, but centers like this might be the wave of the future in spring training camps throughout Florida. With the WCCO sports team, this is Mark Rosen reporting from Baseball City. The Twins take on the Yankees tomorrow afternoon in Fort Lauderdale. Well, picking a favorite in tomorrow's Boys State High School basketball tournament is easy this year. Only one team heads into the Class AA competition with a perfect record. Cold Spring Ricori puts its 23-0 record on the line tomorrow, kicking things off against Wilmer. As their record indicates, Ricori is loaded this year. All five of their starters average double figures. And they're schooled in fundamentals by a coach with 26 years experience. Bob Brink has been to the tournament before, but never with the talent he's blessed with this year. I think the kids are ready to play some good basketball. You know, uh, we played great basketball at times during the year. They played as well as any ball club I've ever coached at Ricori. And, and uh, we play, like I say, we played a little tight uh, in the region. I think, I think the kids will loosen up and they're believing in, in themselves right now. And I think they're ready to play. Cold Spring, Ricori, and the rest of the Class AA teams will play at Williams Arena tomorrow. The single-A competition takes place at the Civic Center. They all move to the Civic Center then on Friday. On the uh, subject of basketball tournaments, primetime NCAA buckets on Channel 4 starting tomorrow night. A doubleheader with Villanova and Kentucky at 7, followed by the Oklahoma-Louisville game. And then Iowa basketball fans will have their wish granted after the Michigan-North Carolina game at 7 on Friday, the Hawkeyes will take on Arizona. Lute Olson in that one, of course, it'll be an interesting rematch. All the games, of course, are regional semifinals. So two NCAA doubleheaders over the next couple nights. Don and Pat. That means we're going to be uh, a little late, late with late. the uh, 10 p.m. report, more like the 11 p.m. report. Yeah, something then. like that. Now, did you say, or are you keeping uh, your uh, uh, guesstimations under a bushel here, who do you have uh, in the final two? In the final two? In the final two, yes. Let's just get down to the final one. You're calling? Purdue. Purdue. Yeah. Oh, you're staying with the Big Ten. Pat? Yeah. I, I go with Tom. Yeah, Whatever of course. Tom okay. says, that's how I feel. <laughs> and Don? Oh, uh, we're about out of time. <laughs> okay, Tom, uh, we'll be back you, with Don. more on that in just a moment. Pat? Now, up next, doctors in the waiting room. Colleen Needles will report on a story about people hoping to get what they asked for. Last spring, one of these farms used Lasso. The other used a competitive brand corn herbicide. Why? We don't know. Because tests at universities and in the field prove that Lasso out yields the competition two out of three times by an average of over four bushels an acre. Now you know which one used Lasso. Lasso. Less stress, more yield. Our buyer goofed. Our loss is your gain. 20% off our manufacturer's suggested retail price. Bargains galore. You want it? We got it. Regularly $19.99. Now just $19.98. We're practically giving it away. We buy in volume and pass the savings on to you. Sale in Sunday. There's free balloons for the kiddies. Everything must go. The boss is out of town. We honor our competitors' coupons. Knox. Our prices are driving our competition into the ground. 
It's Hyundai's Twin Cities grand opening. Better get a move on. Hurry into your Hyundai dealer without delay, because right now, he's got the best deals going on brand new Hyundai Excels. Your Twin Cities Hyundai dealer invites you to drive America's best-selling import and the talk of the auto show. Excels have the most standard features in their class and prices start as low as $56.50. But hurry, the grand opening celebration can't last forever! Test drive the durable Hyundai Excel at Harold Hyundai and White Bear Hyundai. Superstar Michael Jackson is coming to town. His world-famous world tour will be at Met Center on May 4th. Hi, I'm Pat Miles. WCCO Television has been asked to help make this historic concert even more special. We at Channel 4 will be distributing concert tickets to over 20 organizations that service youth with special needs. Thanks to his generous contribution, the Michael Jackson World Tour will make a world of difference for children in the Twin Cities area. You may not have noticed, but this is what is known as Match Day. So what's that, you ask? Well, it is a day of reckoning for the 15,000 students graduating from medical school this year. They find out where they will serve their residencies, and here's how it works. Graduates list their preference, hospitals list their preference, and then a computer matches them up, and waiting for the results created a lot of cases of the butterflies for the 250 graduates from the University of Minnesota. Colleen Needles has the story. Leave it to a medical school to provide sugar-laced cookies and coffee to calm the nerves. I was talking with some uh, friends of mine about five minutes ago over at the Big Ten and we decided that uh, there couldn't be a worse way to do it, but we couldn't think of a better one. So I guess this is what we're stuck with. Husband and wife Brian and Carrie Bunkers are both graduating from medical school. They asked to be placed together in Appleton, Wisconsin. Muriel Sapelsa hopes to leave the Midwest. The West Coast. I'd really like to go to the West Coast and I guess I'm hoping to end up in California, but I might end up staying in Minnesota, so I, I don't know where I'm going to be living. I think that's the most nerve-wracking part of it. In the next 20 minutes, 250 graduates will be told where they'll spend the next three to eight years of their lives. Their destinies are contained here. And as the minutes tick by, only one participant appears unconcerned. But soon, the hour strikes four. The auditorium fills up. You've only got a part of it. The facade begins to wear thin. Uh, do you want any statistics? No. <laughs> okay. Okay. The months of waiting and wondering are over. <laughs> well, I had a little trouble getting the envelope open, and then when I when I got it open, I I couldn't find which side of it to read first. When I finally flipped it up and saw that it was Appleton, I was I was really excited. It is truly an emotional roller coaster. Having shared the elation of good news with friends, it sinks in that another buddy may not have received his first choice. But for the most part, this is a happy day. Muriel is on her way to Beverly Hills, Brian and Carrie are Wisconsin bound, and at least in this corner, all is right with the world. Colleen Needles, WCCO Television News. And an interesting fact, nearly half of all the graduates from the University of Minnesota chose to stay right here in the state good sense. That's where we're going to leave it for this Wednesday, March 23rd. Until tomorrow, good night everyone. Good night. Every night while you're sleeping, UPS is maintaining its status as the only company that delivers overnight to every address coast to coast. And now we guarantee it. Introducing UPS Next Day Air Guaranteed. And because we're so efficient, we'll still do it for up to half what other companies charge, which is guaranteed to cause our competition some sleepless nights. UPS, we run the tightest ship in the shipping business. With a bank, you have your choice of checking or savings. With a relationship at First Banks, you have your choice of checking, savings, mutual funds, tax-deferred annuities, government securities, the services of a complete discount brokerage, and someone to help you make the right choices. Why settle for a bank when you can have a banking relationship? But I was
has Schrock kitchen cabinets on sale now, just in time for spring. Let Menards help you design your dream kitchen with the Schrock custom options your family needs, all on sale. Save on the look you want. Schrock has many door styles to choose from, finished to suit your taste. Plus, buy your cabinets now, and Menards will throw in the kitchen sink absolutely free. Hurry in for springtime savings at Menards. We're helping you build America's heartland at Menards. Okay, our main message. No matter how you start the day, spend the day with the Light FM, 103 WLTE. Northwest, the first smokeless airline, tomorrow on Newsday.